So welcome back. So we're now going to try and work out what the CDF for our random variable big T is going to be. So we're going to try and think up what is going to be the probability that big T is less than or equal to some value little t. Now remember, the range space of our random variable big T is negative infinity to infinity. So the probability that big T is less than or equal to little t actually means the probability that big T is between negative infinity and this value little t. Now we also know what the locus of points in our half plane with a constant t value looks like. It looks like one of these lines like so. So this is uh, roughly uh, t is equal to 1, all the points where if you look at what x divided by y is, it's equal to 1. But if we were thinking about t is equal to minus 1, it might look something like this. If we're thinking about t is equal to 2, it might look something like this. If we're thinking about t is equal to half, it might look something like this. t is equal to 0, it would be this one. t is equal to minus 2, it might look something like this, etc. So if we now think about what all the points in this half plane where the t value is going to be less than or equal to little t is going to look like, well, you just need to find the locus of points where it's going to be equal to t. Let's say it's represented by this line. And then for all of these points over here to the left of this line, they are going to have t values that are less than that value. So if you look at this point, for example, its t value might be something like, I don't know, uh, minus two thirds. Uh, so that's less than this, this value, which for the sake of the picture is t is equal to one. So actually, what you want is to consider all of these points in this part of the plane here. You don't want to consider the points in this part because they have t values greater than your t value. So actually, if you want to find what the probability that big T is less than or equal to little t is, what you need to do is integrate this PDF over this part of the half plane. So all the way over here, including all of what is to the left of this line, wherever this line is for your t-value. So if our t-value was negative 1, it would be down here. So you just want all the things to the left of this line, so this part of the domain and not this part of the domain. But if we have t is equal to 0, we want all of this quadrant and not this quadrant. If we have t is equal to 1, we'd want all of this quadrant plus this triangle here, but not this triangle. So hopefully you see the pattern. And we want to integrate and the, over this subdomain of the half plane. And you can see that it makes far more sense to perform this double integration in polar coordinates rather than Cartesian coordinates because actually you want to integrate over an angle effectively. You want to integrate from here to here over all R values. So it makes more sense to do this integration in polar coordinates. Now, Obviously, polar coordinates, we usually define the angle from this line. We define theta coming from this line rather than from this line. Now, we could just define polar coordinates in the mirror image way with the angle starting here. But actually, I'm going to stick with the normal polar coordinates and note that this PDF is symmetric in X. So this y-axis is a line of symmetry, effectively. If I go to this point here, x, y, and then I consider the symmetrical point in the line of symmetry, the y-axis, so I consider negative x, y, that has exactly the same PDF value. And that's the case for any one of these points you pick here. If you take its mirror image point over here, it has the same PDF value, and that's because this distribution is symmetric in the x-axis. So putting in negative x gives you the exact same value as positive x. And that means that if I want to find what the integral of this PDF is over this uh, part of the half plane, I can actually do the mirror image of it. So I could imagine taking the mirror image of this line here and then integrating over this part. It'll give you the same answer. And that means that I can actually use my normal polar coordinates where the angle starts from here. So before I can write down what this integral is going to be, I need to firstly characterize what this angle is here. This angle between the y-axis and my line, my locus of constant t-value points. And I'm going to call this angle phi. Now why is this angle so important? Well, it's because, of course, that characterizes the 
subdomain of the half plane that I'm going to integrate over, my domain of integration. I'm going to integrate from this line up to pi by 2 plus whatever this angle is, whether it's a positive angle or a negative angle. Uh, and that will depend on what the t value is. If I have a positive t value, it's going to be a positive angle. Whereas if it's a negative t value, it's going to be a negative angle. Therefore, I'm going to be integrating to pi by 2 minus that angle uh, and just be integrating to a smaller angle up here. So, how can I get a formula for that in terms of t? Well, consider this triangle. So, I'm going to have length 1 here, and then I just need to know what is the length of this side, and that side is going to be of length t. And the reason for that is we have this formula here. So, you plug in y is equal to 1 here, and of course, the x value that you get is going to be t. So, at this point, uh, which is y is equal to 1, you're going to be t along in the x-axis, therefore this length here is going to be t. So for a positive t value, that's going to be in this direction. For a negative t value, it's going to be in this direction. Now I use basic trigonometry. Tan of this angle phi is equal to opposite over adjacent, so it's equal to t over 1. So tan of phi is equal to t, and therefore phi is equal to tan inverse of t. So this formula is actually going to work not only for positive t values, but for negative t values as well. So as you make t bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger you're going to get values of phi closer and closer to pi by 2. Whereas if you take negative values of t, then tan inverse is going to give you negative values of the angles, symmetric to the answer that you would get for the positive equivalent of t. So this is going to nicely work and give me the correct answer. It's going to give me a positive angle for positive t's, and if t is negative, it's going to give me a negative angle, which is exactly what I need in order for my formulas to work. So now time for some integration. So as I've said, the probability that big T is less than or equal to little t, it is the integral of this PDF over this domain from this line here, the negative x-axis, to our line of constant t value that corresponds to this little t here. And you need to integrate over all of this all the way out to negative infinity. Now, so that we can use normal polar coordinates where the angle is subtended from this line here rather than from this line here. And by the way, we could have just change the way we define polar coordinates to have the angle from here. But to avoid doing that, I've decided it's less confusing just to stick with normal polar coordinates. So the argument that we're using is the symmetry of this in the x-axis to argue that actually that integral is the same as integrating from here to the mirror image of that line, which I've drawn here. So over all of this domain here. So all of this quadrant plus this triangle, but without this triangle here. So when we do that, this is what we're going to get. So this outer integral is the integral over the theta values, and then the inner integral is the integral over the r values. Here we've got the r d r d theta that you need when you're integrating over polar coordinates. Then we've got the PDF here, which is this thing just transformed out of x and y coordinates into r theta coordinates. And now let's think about what we're integrating over here. So the angle we're integrating from is 0, so from here, 2, and then we've got 2 pi by 2, which is the 90 degree angle, of course, plus this angle phi, whether it is positive or negative. So if it's t is a positive number, this will be positive, and that means we're going further than pi by 2. We're going into this part, whereas if t is negative, it will be a negative angle, and therefore we won't be integrating as far. We'll just be integrating to some line in this first quadrant. So from 0 to pi by 2 plus tan inverse of t, and then we're integrating from 0 to infinity with regards to r, because we want to go right out to infinity for r. And now this is just this PDF. So we've got the 2 from here. We've got the half to the power of nu over 2 from here. We've got the over 2 pi from here. And then we've got the divided by gamma nu over 2 from here. So that's all just constant. Then we've got y to the power of nu minus 1. y in polar coordinates is r sine theta. So 
that's replaced y, we've got r sine theta to the power of nu minus 1, and then we've got e to the minus a half y squared, we combine that with e to the minus a half x squared to get e to the minus a half x squared plus y squared, but x squared plus y squared is r squared, so we've got e to the minus a half r squared, and then we've got just the bit that we need for integrating over polar coordinates, so it's not just dr d theta, remember you need r uh, dr d theta uh, when you're integrating over polar coordinates. So this is the CDF for our random variable t. So you might think that our next step is now going to be to differentiate this great mess with respect to t to get our PDF. Well, we're not going to do that just there. We're going to tinker a little bit more before we do that. Because the first fundamental theorem of calculus, remember, only applies to one integral. So we want to simplify this thing down so that we've just got one integral rather than two integrals. And we're going to simplify it by firstly doing the r integral, and then we'll apply uh, differentiation of that theta, differentiation to the theta integral to get our PDF, and we'll use the first fundamental theorem of calculus then to do that. So we're going to simplify this a little bit. So we're just now interested in doing this r integral. So we can pull out all the things that are constants with respect to the r integration. So firstly, all of these things out the front here, these are constants. 2, a half to the power of nu over 2, the square root of 2 pi, gamma of nu over 2. This is all the constants. So we'll pull this out of this inner integral. So it's come out the front here. So we've still got the integral from 0 to pi by 2 plus tan inverse of t. And now here are these constants that have come out. 2, a half to the power of nu over 2, the square root of 2 pi, gamma of nu over 2. Excellent. And we're also going to pull out the sine of theta bit, because that is a constant with respect to the r integration. So we've got here r sine theta to the power of nu minus 1. So that is r to the power of nu minus 1 times sine theta to the power of nu minus 1. We'll pull out that sine theta to the power of nu minus 1, or sine nu minus 1 theta here. Um, so that's been pulled out. So this is just alternate notation for sine of theta to the power of nu minus 1, that you bring the nu minus 1 and put it here, um, which I hope you're familiar with. And then we've got the integral from 0 to infinity still, and we've got r to the power of nu minus 1, but then we've also got the r here, so we've got r to the power of nu, e to the minus a half r squared dr and then the d theta. So this is what we're now going to concentrate on. What is the value of this integral? And the way we're going to do this is by doing a substitution, and we're going to show that this becomes one of those integrals that is defined to be a certain gamma function. And then this will just be replaced by another gamma. And indeed, it comes out as being this gamma that we need to get here in the formula. Remember, we've already got this one. We're now going to get this one here. So to evaluate this integral, we're going to perform integration by substitution, and the substitution we're going to make is a very simple one. We're going to let u equal a half r squared. Therefore, if we find what du is with respect to dr, just differentiate this, we get du by dr is equal to, the 2 comes down and cancels with the half, we'll just get r. Therefore, du is equal to r dr. So let's now replace this integral in steps. So I won't do the whole thing all at once. So we've got the integral from 0 to infinity of r to the power of nu e to the negative a half r squared. So putting in a half r squared is equal to u, we get e to the negative u. We'll need to take an r out of here to mix with the dr. So we'll have r dr, and then we can replace that with du. So that's what we've done there. And then we're left with r to the power of nu minus 1. We still need to replace r with what it is in terms of u. We'll do that in a moment. But firstly, let's just think about what the, um, the limits of integration are going to be. So I've drawn a little picture here to help us. So this is u plotted against r. So r values here, we're letting them go over the entire real line, although we can see that that's not really necessary because we're only integrating from 0 to infinity. So this sort of parabola is what this function looks like. But we're only actually interested in the positive or the non-negative part of the real line from 0 to infinity. And you can see that on that part, this function is a nice injective map that is mapping the positive real line again back on to the positive real line. So indeed, actually, between the non-negative real line and the non-negative real line, this is a nice bijective map. Um, 
So you can see that the lower limit of integration, 0 is going to be mapped onto 0, and the upper limit, infinity, is still going to be mapped onto infinity by this. So actually, the limits of integration remain the same. We need to integrate from 0 to infinity. So now all that remains is just substituting in what r is in terms of u. So we've discussed how this mapping for the non-negative real line is a nice bijective map. So it has an inverse map. So just inverting this, take the 2 onto the other side, we get 2u, and then we want the square root of 2u. So r is equal to the square root of 2u. And again, remember, square root means positive square root. So we can insert that in for r here. So we'll get 2u to the power of a half, and then we just multiply out the half with the v or the new minus 1, so we get 2u to the power of new minus 1 over 2. Our next move is going to be to pull out this 2 part, so we're going to split it up, we just want the u bit inside here, and we want to pull out this 2 part, because we want to get it into the form of a gamma function. So I've just written out here to remind you what the definition of the gamma function is. So for alpha greater than zero, gamma of alpha is defined to be the integral from zero to infinity, u to the power of alpha minus one, e to the negative u, du. So this is looking very hopeful, but we need to get this two out of here firstly. So that's what I've done here. So I've pulled out the two to the power of nu minus one over two, and then we're left with u to the power of nu minus one over two. But again, I'm aiming for this form. I'm aiming for the form of something minus one. So I've changed this to nu plus one over two minus one. And you can see that if you combine those together, you get back nu minus one over two. But now I can quite clearly see what my alpha is going to be equal to. This thing is equal to gamma at, of nu plus 1 over 2, which is always some number that's greater than 0, so this is valid. We don't need to worry about this possibly being negative, because nu is always a, a natural number, 1, 2, 3, etc. So this integral then, all this boils down to is this, 2 to the power of nu minus 1 over 2, and I apologise, that looks as though the um, 2 isn't over the new, but it is supposed to be over that entire thing, times gamma of new plus 1 over 2. And you see how hopeful this is starting to look, because that gamma of new plus 1 over 2 is what we want up here in the final PDF of the T distribution. And just to give you some other hopeful looking signs, look how this is going to nicely cancel with what we've got here. But we'll save this joyous part for the next video. We'll have a break here.